Hello everyone. Um, we're here to give you an introduction of Vitesse and present to you a real world usage of Vitesse. So I'm here with Arthur, who's a, a software engineer at GitHub and also a maintainer of the Vitesse project. And my name is Florent. I'm a software engineer at PlanetScale, the company behind um, Vitesse, and I'm also a maintainer of Vitesse. So today, we're going to give you a brief overview of what is Vitesse, try to explain uh, how does it work, why we have Vitesse in the first place, and then Arthur will move on to Vitesse at GitHub. So what they had before Vitesse, why did they decide to move to Vitesse, and uh, how does it look now that they have Vitesse instead of the old solution. Uh, then we'll move on to new and upcoming features, and we'll finish with some question, answers, and resources for you to learn more about Vitesse. Uh, so before I get started, I just want to do like a quick uh, survey. Who knows, like who have heard about Vitesse before? In the sense like, did you play with Vitesse? Did you touch Vitesse in the past? Just raise your hand. Okay, cool. That's a lot more than I expected. I'm happy. All right. What is Vitesse? So Vitesse is a scalable, distributed, cloud-native database system built around MySQL. The main goal of Vitesse is to be a seamless replacement for your MySQL. And it was, it is part, sorry, of the CNCF. It is a graduated project. I think it reached graduation around 2019. And it originally started as a scaling solution for MySQL at YouTube around 2010. So it was created at YouTube, it grew in YouTube, and in 2018, YouTube donated the whole project to the, to the CNCF. Uh, Vitesse is massively scalable. This is uh, thanks to sharding and it is also highly available. So we run MySQL in replicated mode. So we have primaries, we have replicas, which means that whenever you have a node that, like a primary node that fails, we can fade over to the replica, which is why it is uh, highly available. Um, Vitesse is compatible with MySQL 5.7, MySQL 8.0. It used to be also compatible with MariaDB, but since the two code bases uh, diverged, MariaDB and MySQL, we prefer to focus only on uh, MySQL. Uh, Vitesse is used by many large deployments, small or large deployments uh, over the world. Um, it's not all the names. I know that Activision is also using Vitesse. Uh, just a quick survey. Who is using Vitesse in production here? Okay, cool. Yeah, GitHub and Activision. Uh, <laughs> cool. All right. Among all of these, we have some key adopters. Uh, Slack who's 100% on Vitesse, they wrote a very good blog post, which is linked right at the bottom of the slide, uh, explaining how they migrated, why they migrated, etc. Uh, GitHub, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, GD.com, this is a very important Chinese website, like a com commerce website, and they have more than 10,000 databases uh, running in production. And also PlanetScale, they have also more than 10,000 clusters uh, of Vitesse running in production. Uh, so, Obviously, Vitesse is a open source project. That's why it's in the maintainer track. So we have 15 maintainers uh, contributing to Vitesse on the, on the, on very regularly. And in 2022, we had more than 200 contributors, from which more than 100 were caught contributors. All of those contributors came from 57 different companies, and the caught contributors came from 22 companies. All right, before we go into the more technical part of the talk, I just want to introduce two keywords um, about Vitesse. So the first one is key space. A key space is the equivalent of a MySQL logical database. So I don't know, you can have a key space user, for example, where you're going to have like a bunch of table around user, user data, etc. And a key space can be composed of one or more shards. So a shard is basically going to be a subset of all your data inside the key space. Um, and a shard is composed of a primary and one or more replicas. This is a simple uh, graph or diagram of an architect of a, the architecture of a Vitesse cluster. On the right, you can see shard one, two, three, n, and these shards are composed, like I said before, of primary and replicas. One primary, for example, is composed of the MySQL D instance. Uh, where you're going to have all the data stored and which is going to act just like a MySQL D. 
And attached to it as a sidecar, we have VT tablet component. And the VT tablet is responsible for managing the entire MySQL D instance. Uh, VT tablet also exposes a gRPC API, which will be used by VT gate, which is the small component in the middle, to receive query and uh, instructions. All right, so Vitigate. Vitigate, this is the most uh, user-facing component of Vitesse. This is where you're going to send queries. This is where you're going to send instructions. Uh, it exposes an RPC, uh, yeah, RP gRPC API, and it uses the SQL protocol to talk with applications. Uh, whenever you send a query to your Vitesse cluster, it will go directly to your Vitigate and Vitigate will parse the query, evaluate the query, and then send the query to the correct shard and correct tablet. In yellow, we have the control plane of the cluster. So we have VTCLD, which is the administration tool of Vitesse. We also have VTORC, which uh, will allow you to repair any failure in your cluster. And VTAdmin, which is a front-end UI that uh, allows you to visualize and manage your cluster. Finally, in red, this is the topo server. So those can be like etcd, uh, used to be console, but now we're deprecating this. And it can also be zookeeper. So this is where we're going to store the metadata of the cluster and the configuration. All right. So why do you want to choose Vitesse? Like what's the main features of Vitesse compared to uh, Vanilla MS MySQL? So we try to be as compatible as possible with MySQL because the goal is to be like a seamless replacement of MySQL. Um, we have the resharding feature, which allows you to partition your key space into different shards. We also have materialization, which is the same as the SQL materialization, but in SQL, you have to manually update your view to refresh your data. And Vitesse will just do that for, for you automatically. We also have cluster management. So we have a tool that allows you to manage your cluster. Uh, we have online schema changes, which uh, allows you to do non-blocking and non-blocking schema changes. So you can do like a big alto table and you won't have any downtime or maybe like a few seconds or maybe like a minute. We have seamless backup recovery operation, uh, query consolidation, which is um, in the VT tablet. Whenever you have the same query multiple times, and concurrently, we'll just execute the same the query only once, get the result, and return it to all the requests. Uh, and finally, we have automatic failure detection and repair. Uh, that's thanks to VTORC. I don't know if you've attended the talk uh, of Activision yesterday, but they talk about them trying to destroy the cluster, etc., and the cluster always being repaired. That's thanks to this. Uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Arthur to talk about Vitesse at GitHub. Hi. Um, so before I'm going to start to talk about uh, Vitesse at GitHub, I think we should first look at um, how MySQL is being run at GitHub, right? So at GitHub, we have a fairly standard MySQL setup. So we have around uh, 80 clusters uh, running on uh, across like 1,200 MySQL instances. Um, those are all bare metal. So these are like bare metal hosts that we are running. Uh, we have I think like 300 additional hosts that are running on Azure VMs. Um, our MySQL clusters are usually grouped into like feature-based clusters, like, I don't know, actions and checks are like stored in one cluster. We store issues and pull requests in one cluster or shared clusters where like uh, data from different features is stored together. And sometimes like we do joins between tables of different features and stuff like that. Um, at peak, we have around like 5 million queries per second going to the replicas that we run. And we have around 500,000 queries per second going to the primaries of those clusters. Um, so we basically have a very uh, read heavy load on our database clusters. But it's not true for all of them, right? Some are more write heavy, some are more read heavy. But overall, uh, it's quite read heavy. Um, in total, we store 330 terabytes of data um, across the primaries, and that data is then obviously replicated to all the replicas that we have. <coughs> so um, our scaling strategy for MySQL so far uh, consists of, like, of different things that we could do. Um, like when we created new features, we would set up like a, a completely separate cluster to make sure that like um, the new like new features don't. Um, run into issues with like on existing clusters where other features might live and there's like no uh, 
yeah, like na noisy neighbor issues or anything like that. Um, we also spend a lot of time breaking up existing clusters. So I just mentioned that like issues and pull requests live in their own cluster, right? But um, like I think four years ago, I actually worked on a project um, where before that, user data, repository data, issue data, pull request data, and like a whole bunch of other data was all stored in one cluster. And um, that cluster just couldn't maintain that load anymore. So we back, basically went back and like <laughs> did like brain surgery and took like some tables out of that cluster into like a separate cluster to spread the load um, across like different uh, database clusters. Um, another strategy that we uh, employ quite often is like adding more replicas. So we try to send as much read load as we can to replica instances. Um, and if you have a read heavy cluster, this is like perfect. You just add more replicas and the existing replicas that you have become more healthy because they uh, need to serve less load, right? But often if you have problems with the primaries, um, the only way to scale, like, to scale that is by just switching out the machines, right? And often it's really hard or like, sometimes it's wasteful, right? Like you have one machine size and then you reach the limits of that machine and then you need to upgrade every machine in the cluster to go to like a bigger machine size and then suddenly you have like twice the amount of RAM as before, but you only needed 10% more, right? So there's like some problems there. Um, but that was like one strategy that we employed. Um, but then eventually we also ran into problems with those scaling approaches, right? Like as I mentioned before, better hardware is more expensive, right? And if you have to go to like really, really big hardware, it's getting really, really expensive. Um, we also ran into like really unbearable schema migration times. So um, we have a tool called Ghost, which is an online schema migration tool for MySQL. So we can add indexes and columns without any downtime, right? And this uh, works basically like we create a, a Ghost table and then we write to both tables and we copy the existing data to this Ghost table. So it's all like seamless and zero downtime, but it takes a long time. Um, like we have one cluster where just like adding a new column to the biggest table takes like two months or something like that. And that's like, that's for a development team, that's not great, right? They build their feature and then they come to you and they are like, yeah, we need to run this tiny migration. We need this like, tiny int column here. And you're like, yeah, cool. Wait two months for that to finish, right? Um, we also ran into problems, um, which I'm calling like buffer pool freshing. So MySQL has a cache that sits um, in front of, the disk that you have, right? So every time you, like a query comes in and um, uh, it, it requests some data, right? Uh, MySQL goes and first looks into the cache, you see data there, if yes, then it takes it from, from the cache, which is fast because it's in memory. If it's not there, it has to go to disk, right? And load it from disk, so the query becomes slower. Um, we, like if, if the working set for, like the, date, the working set of the cluster uh, becomes bigger, like the frequently used working set, of the cluster becomes bigger than the memory you have, you start running into like really weird effects where basically like a query comes in, you don't have the data, you read it from, from, from disk into cache, next query comes in, you don't have the data, throw whatever you read out to read something new. And you cannot really reuse the data that you're caching and the cache becomes useless and you start like reading enormous amounts of data from disk over and over again. Um, and then we also ran into issues with replication lag. So, all the changes that happen on the primary need to be streamed out to the replicas and they need to reapply those changes. If you have like a huge amount of changes happening on the primary, those changes also happen on the replicas and the replicas become busy just applying those changes. And then you cannot actually like sort of the read load anymore. Um, and in some cases, uh, like if, if the replication la uh, traffic becomes so big um, that the replicas cannot even keep up anymore applying those changes, they fall behind and you start serving stale data. Um, also, you cannot scale this by adding more replicas because those replicas will also be busy with the same data, right? Like it's the same data coming in through the replication stream. <clears throat> so we looked at different solutions um, to solve these issues or help us to work around these issues. And eventually we picked Vitesse. Um, like the biggest reason for us is that Essentially, Vitesse is still MySQL, right? Like we have a huge MySQL setup. We have a lot of automation around MySQL. We have a lot of tooling that we built for MySQL. Uh, all our applications, or like most applications are built with MySQL. Engineers know how to write uh, code that uses MySQL, right? For us, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to switch to something else. 
where we don't know how to operate it, we don't know what the problems will be, uh, and engineers need to basically learn from scratch how to build things using a different system. So ha having like a solution for these problems that still is MySQL is great for us. Um, then another point also is that like the sharding model that we test has really fits our data model very well. Like if you think about the data on GitHub, most of it is is like scoped by repository, right? So for us, uh, sharding by repository ID is like the easiest way to scale uh, the data out, right? And shard it into like good chunks. Um, and the third point is that the query compatibility between Vitesse and MySQL is acceptable. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's perfect because we ran into a lot of issues, um, but over time we worked through all of them, like with the help of maintainers like Florent and also on our own and eventually like by providing fixes for, for the Vitesse Creative Planner, that's how I eventually became a maintainer of Vitesse as well. So let's take a look at the timeline. Um, in 2019 and I think actually in 2018, we ran the first experiments using Vitesse um, and we started moving things over in 2020 with uh, all the notification data that we have, like all the emails and stuff that you get that is actually being like stored and, and uh, uh, queried from a VTest cluster. And this was um, a very basic cluster, like there's only two tables in it, but a lot of data. Um, in early 2022, uh, we shipped a change that moved all actions, checks, and statuses data over to VTest. And in early 2023, uh, so like just a few months ago, uh, we finished the migration of issues and pull request data to a VTest cluster. So today we run um, 20 key spaces on Vitesse. And you might remember like these 330 terabytes of data that I mentioned before running in MySQL. That included everything that is actually running in Vitesse as well. So uh, we have like 150 terabytes of data on the primaries in Vitesse. That's like almost 50% of our data is behind Vitesse. Um, and we see around like uh, 750,000 queries per second across like primaries and replicas in Vitesse at peak. <clears throat> um, yeah, so basically like, I think like a, a big chunk of our largest features run on Vitesse nowadays. So let's take a look at the issues and pull requests um, uh, cluster, which is like the latest one that we moved to Vitesse. Uh, it runs on six in shards. So like we're, we don't have like a crazy massively sharded setup right now. Uh, like Activision had, we have like a fairly low number of shards usually. Um, so we have 16 primaries and 84, re 84 replicas in those 16 shards. So it's like 64 machines. <coughs> we store uh, around 26 terabytes of data in this cluster. And at peak, we have uh, 30,000 queries per second on, rep uh, on the primaries and 220,000 queries per second on the replica. So this is like an example of a very read heavy cluster. <coughs> And now um, I have like this huge table here, which shows like the effects of moving from MySQL to, uh, to Vitesse. So the old cluster that we have uh, had that served this data had one primary and 100 replicas. Um, and you can see here as well, like these are pretty beefy machines, right? Like each machine had like 780, uh, 68 uh, gigabytes of memory. And they're like all running on NVMe, uh, like, like at least they, they all use SSDs like to provide very fast data access. Um, and we were able to move this to only 64 hosts, right? Like, so we'd reduce the number of hosts that we need to serve this traffic while also reducing the memory. Like we, we are now using like cheaper machines to serve the same data with less machines than before. Um, you can see this here in the disk read rate. Um, like instead of reading, like this kind of like goes into this buffer pool freshing problem instead of reading 11 gigabytes per second across the whole cluster, we're now only reading 800 megabytes a second uh, from the disk across all these machines. Um, we also see like an improvement in read rate on uh, the primaries as well, just like not just on the replicas. Uh, I forgot to include the write uh, rate, but that also, um, like it didn't drop, but now instead of like writing all the data only on the primary, on one primary, right? Like we, sh we, we were able to um, split the data uh, across all the 16 primaries that we run now, right? Like each primary is less busy writing data. 
And that also leads to less replication lag because all the replicas only need to read like one sixty, read and apply one sixteenth of the changes uh, that happen um, across the whole cluster. And I have like this online schema change duration uh, improvement down there. So the largest largest table that we have on this cluster is like uh, um, it's called issue events. So basically, like you know, if you go on an issue page, you see like when someone like adds a label or removes the label, you see like these tiny events there. Um, previously, I, I checked the numbers, like the last migration we ran before we moved to Vitesse took three weeks to execute. Um, and I think we even had cases depending on like how much traffic we see where it took longer than that. And now it takes two days. Like it's a huge improvement for developers if they want to do changes um, on this cluster. Okay, um, so our current architecture for Vitesse is basically built on top of our MySQL setup, as I mentioned before. Um, we don't have, like, we don't do what I would call like a best practice Vitesse setup where everything runs in Kubernetes and like, like automatically scaled and we have tiny shards and all that stuff. Um, we run VT tablets alongside MySQL on bare metal hosts. Um, the only thing that we run in, v in Kubernetes is the VT gates, VT CTLD and VT admin part of Vitesse. So basically like you can have like a hybrid setup. Um, and we're also currently running on an older version of Vitesse. Like, it's not super old, but um, I think the latest one is V16, V17 is getting released soon, so we're a bit behind. In the future, I actually would like us to see, like, or like, I, I'm trying to move us into a model where we upgrade to newer Vitesse versions uh, more often to get the latest fixes and performance improvements. And um, we're also looking into moving potentially like more clusters to Vitesse, but it really depends on. Uh, on the load on the cluster, right? Like we're always, or at least right now, we're shooting for a hybrid solution where we move things to Vitesse where it makes sense and leave things on MySQL where it doesn't. Um, because there is, like for us, without having like a full Kubernetes setup, there is an overhead to managing Vitesse and we don't want to pay that overhead if we don't really need to. Okay, so in conclusion, um, like Vitesse has enabled GitHub to scale MySQL much further than we were able to scale it before. And uh, I think if you, like if those problems that you heard about sound familiar, I think you definitely should check out Vitesse as a potential solution. Um, if you are curious how we did the setup without downtime and stuff like that, and how we ran those migrations, feel free to come uh, to me after the talk and we can talk about that as well. Okay, so I'm giving it back to Laurent, who's going to talk about new and upcoming features in Vitesse. Yay. Uh, all right, so let's start with the new features. So this is all the most important features that happened since KubeCon Detroit. Uh, so that includes the ones in V15 and V16. Uh, like Arthur said, uh, the latest version of Vitesse is V16. It was released a couple months ago, I think. Uh, so we had two new big components marked as GA in V15, which are VTORC and VTADMIN. VTORC is the component that will repair your cluster if it's failing. And uh, VTADMIN is, the like I mentioned before, it's the new front-end UI to visualize and manage your cluster. We also reworked all of our CLI flags, uh, so we changed the infrastructure between, uh, behind all of the flags that we had. Uh, there are now more thin, they look more the same, and now we can reiterate on our CLI flags, build some new tools, new documentation, etc. Um, we also have incremental backup and point in time recovery that was added in V15. Uh, we also reworked the entire documentation, so we have a big documentation project, and we started in V16 by going through all of the pages that we had and just making sure that they were accurate, up to date, and that they were saying the right thing. And the next step for the documentation is that we actually want to restructure the entire website. So we wanted to make sure that the content was right before we changed the entire structure. Uh, and we also added sharded views support. So this is the SQL view. Uh, it wasn't supported for the sh uh, like a sharded key space, but now it is. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that was the new features. And now I'm going to talk about the upcoming features. So this is for V17, which is going to be released in June and beyond foreign key support. So we don't have support for foreign keys. Uh, we want to support them. Uh, we have a big project for this. It's not going to be released in V17, but it's going to be released beyond V17. Uh, we have uh, schema tracking improvements 
on the queue as well. Uh, schema tracking is a feature that is very important to us because it allows us to track the schema across all of the shards and make Vitigate aware of your SQL schema, uh, which allows for a lot more queries than um, if schema tracking was off. So anyway, we're going to do some improvements to this. We're also going to improve the MySQL compatibility. We have a list of all the queries that we do not support uh, and that MySQL support. And the goal is to continue consuming that list and support more queries. So we're just going to work on that. And we're also going to enhance our FastJet UI. Uh, we have a benchmarking tool for Vitesse, which allows us to run some nightly benchmark and see if uh, someone degraded the performance of our code base. And that's our FastJet. And we want to improve the UI and the tool itself. All right. Here are some resources for you if you want to learn more about Vitesse. If you want to get started, there are some tutorials that you can run on Minikube locally or just outside of Minikube, just on your local machine. Uh, you have our Slack if you want to ask any question. If you just want to talk to us, we're right here. And uh, thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you have any question, don't hesitate. Yeah. yeah you, you, mentioned the... you mentioned earlier that you, the compatibility with MySQL is not perfect. Do you mm. have any example of such a use case where you have to modify your query so that it's compatible with Vitesse? Uh, the most classical one, let's say. Right, right, right. I think... I the. But yeah, I think get locks is not supported, like named locks, but you can go ahead um, if you want. Yeah, so uh, one thing that, that I worked on was um, uh, subquery compatibility. So if you have like, if you have a query and you have a subquery and uh, those two are correlated to actually like only load data from one shard, right? Which is like a good case, like it's, it's a case that my, uh, that we test in theory should support very well, right? That wasn't supported. So, for example, I worked on that and on fixing that. Um, we had, uh, like, we actually had like a lot of subquery things that we needed to fix to make it work. Uh, mm -hmm. When we initially ran, like the way we migrated to Vitesse, is we basically took our CI setup, switched out MySQL for for Vitesse and ran it. And as Activision also ran into like everything failed, <laughs> like it would time out and would wouldn't finish. And we sat down, like got a list of things that were broken, tried to like group them together. And then we went one by one through and figured out whether like it's something that we can fix on our side by just like like doing tiny changes to the queries, including sharding keys or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or if that was like a, a thing that Vitesse should support out of the box, uh, but doesn't, and we have to go and like fix it. Yeah, I think mostly everything like all the queries are going to be cross shard. Like you have to send it to one shard, another shard, and then aggregate the result at the Vitigate level. Like that's the most complex kind of query. So that's why we've added schema tracking to be able to know which columns we have in which table and then et cetera. But we're working on it, so. <laughs> yeah. And wait, we have a file that lists all the queries that we don't support. If you want, I can send you the file. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to ask about the online schema changes. Mm. I know that there are different strategies to run them, like direct, percon, the percona thing, ghost, Vitesse. So first question is how does the Vitesse way compare to ghost? And then the second question would be like, um, if there are any performance um, differences. Okay. I've never run online DDL on my own, so I couldn't answer, but <laughs> maybe Arthur did, so. Uh, I think the, the Vitesse way nowadays is actually like pretty similar to Ghost. There's some changes, but it's like done by the same author, like Shlomi, Shlomi uh, is working. He, he, he built Ghost, and now he's working on the Vitesse uh, online schema change. Um, so they're fairly similar. I think the main difference is that um, I think the, the downtime is short, like not the downtime, but the, the time that the tables get locked in Ghost is shorter than in the Vitesse solution. Um, but overall, it's it's a very similar approach. Like, the, the face. Yes. Okay. It, like in in Vitesse, I think the way it works is um, queries get paused at the VT gate level until the cutover is done, and then queries are let through again to the new table. And in Ghost, it's like on MySQL level. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Hi. I have two questions. First, uh, do you recommend uh, starting at, uh, let's assume you start a new project, do you recommend starting with Vitesse or migrating uh, in a later stage? And the second uh, uh, question I have is, you mentioned you had uh, ho overhead, right, to managing Vitesse. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Yes. Um, so the first question is, if you, if you think you'll get to that size that I've shown, then yes, you probably should yeah. start out with Vitesse because it's easier if you, like, in our case, we had a lot of queries that were like written with MySQL support in mind. Like they, they worked fine on MySQL, but then you need to think about like how do I shard my data? Um, how will cross shard queries work? What will the performance be like? Mm -hmm. If you start out with a test, you have to think about that first and then design your system. And then maybe some features, you won't even build them in the first place because they don't make sense in, in your like architecture, right? Uh, for us, it was the other way around. We had to figure out like how do we even support this feature in like the new world, right? Um, and then the, the second question was the overhead. Um, so uh, let's say there is management overhead, like from a from a database uh, operations perspective. I mean, if you're using Kubernetes, like that overhead almost goes away. But if you do everything manually, then you need to like I don't know start uh, start. Uh, like add additional tooling to manage the test part of things, right? Like to, to start the VT tablet, you need to make sure that everything, like add monitoring support for all these things, right? Uh, and then there's also overhead on a design perspective, right? Um, so one example that I, I can give is, uh, if you go and use our REST API, we give you, for example, repository IDs, right? And then you can later look up that repository by uh, issue IDs, and you can look up that issue by ID. We don't shard by issue ID. So if you have a request that comes in, like an SQL query, with, where you like try to find an issue just by its ID, um, by default that would be like a scatter gather type of query where Vitesse is going to send that to all shards. If you have hundreds of shards, you send that query to all hundreds of shards. Um, and we use things like lookup. Uh, it's called lookup v index. So basically, Vitesse keeps a mapping of the index ID, uh, the issue ID back to which shard the issue lives on, right? Um, basically, you can think of it as a mapping between uh, issue ID and repo ID. That's essentially like the logical way of uh, how to think about it. And that needs to be stored in, my, like in, in Vitesse as well. So you have like need to store this mapping in, in, in MySQL as well. And it takes uh, uh, disk space. And if you then do a lookup, you have to run this lookup first. Like if you try to load an issue just by ID, you need to first do this v-index lookup and then like a second query to actually fetch the data. So there's like some um, performance overhead as well. It's not huge, like it's fine. I don't think any one of you noticed that like we changed everything out <laughs> underneath, uh, but it's something that you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a question about like, um, how should I use Vitesse, like as in, um, do you see it as purely like a OLTP, like a transactional database, or are there use cases for like analytical, um, you know, use cases? I mean, right now it seems GitHub is more using it as a transactional database. But, yeah, but. yeah. So we have OLTP. We used to have support for OLAP. OLAP. I think we have plans on removing it. I'm not entirely sure uh, what's the plan about OLAP, but we had support for OLAP in the past. That's for sure. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the future of the OLAP and the streaming mode of Vitesse is, honestly. But yeah, I can I can double check right after, but I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, we're in the process of merging OL, like the OLT, the sequential execution function, the streaming function for executing queries together. But what will OLAP become? I'm not exactly sure. For now, you can, but in the future, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so I guess. It's more, we should probably use it more for transactional purposes than. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, in your architecture diagram, you've shown a load balancer. How does it handle like adding replicas and failing replicas? Uh, replicas? Does it, are they automatically added uh, to the load balancer, or do you have like a unified like access point? Uh, which load balancers because uh, all shards and all uh, replicas then? 
Uh, so the gray part here, the load balancer, is not really part of uh, Vitesse. Like, that's the thing that you have to add on your own, basically. Okay. Uh, you have your layer of VTK. You might have one, a hundred, one thousand, but you need some kind of load balancer to distribute all your queries across all your VTK. So that's... Yeah. I, I can also talk about this and, like, how it works in our setup. Um, so we have a TCP load balancer at the front where, like, my SQL connections come in via, like, a shared or like a, a standardized DNS name, right? And then um, we like the load balancer just distributes across VT gates, and then inside the VT gate layer, um, every query that comes in is automatically distributed across. Like, it's, let's say you have four replicas, um, and you run four queries, right? Uh, each query, one after the other, might actually land to a different replica. So, like, it's automatically distributed at the VT gate layer, but you need to also uh, distribute like uh, request or oh, like connections coming in from your application to DVT gate somehow. Uh, another for the, um, question: How many VT gates do you need? Like, uh, like, do you need one VT gate for one primary, or is it like? Uh... You, you no, you can have honestly. You can have as many. So you have one VT gate, at least one VT gate per cluster. Uh, behind your VT gate, you can have as many key spaces as you want. But no, you can have just as many VT gates as you want. I think it depends on like how, like what the load is on your VT gate, if you want to scale up or down. But yeah, yeah you can have multiple applications on the same VT gate, even though it yeah. might not be the best practice, I think, but it, you, you could. Yeah, there's like connection pooling happens at the VT tablet layer. And like also like things like, uh, what did you call it? Uh, consolidation. Yeah. And there's also connection pooling happening at the VT gate layer. So. If you have only one VT gate and you have like, I don't know, 100,000 connections come in, it will probably fall over and die, right? But if you, you can scale different parts of your test independently. Like if you have many connections, but don't actually run many queries, you just scale the VT gate layer and you're fine. If you have um, many queries, but uh, like not, not so high number of connections, um, then you scale the VT tablet layer. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, I noticed that uh, uh, GitHub run all controller plan of Vitesse on Kubernetes, but data plan on uh, bare metal servers. Um, so my question is, uh, now can Vitesse run all uh, controller plan and data plan on containers and uh, Kubernetes? Like, do we do, do GitHub want to move everything to Kubernetes? To Kubernetes, is that the question? Yes. Yeah. So we were actually talking about this the last two lunches. We're talking about yeah, you should move all your VT tablet and MySQL instances to Kubernetes and just like yeah, like that's the, the preferred way of how to run yeah. uh, VTS is like have everything in Kubernetes, right? Both the data and um, the VT gate layer. Um, I don't know, like we don't have any plans. It would be nice or interesting to do, right? Uh, because it allows you to be more flexible and scaling. Um, and it also would allow us to not have to go and like provision huge boxes for some of the clusters that are not as big. Um, but we don't have any plans for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, okay. S hi, S -s thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.